does have my name on the front of it.
How many has an unspoken prayer request? We got a uh, we got a message from Drema uh, before church time. Uh, Roger Albright's wife, I think it's Katie, Kathy, she has passed away. And so let's keep them in in our prayers. Uh, sadness all over our land, but keep them in your prayers today. To the Lord. And if you wasn't here this morning, I was requesting prayer for my uh, sister Donna. She's having a lot of trouble being her. Passes out or something, and they ain't figured out what's going on with her. So just, just pray. God knows what's going on. And just pray for her. All right. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am.
today is a day I felt so good, and I couldn't tell you how long. And I want that to look for it. But uh, I want church to pray for David. He's sick and Mike. They're both Mike is a doctor now. But also, I want you to pray for my grandbaby. Now, I mean, she's been sick all week. And uh, I just want to say, I love the Lord. And he can you know, I thank you for it, Bobby. The words, I don't know how to say how much I do. And I try to do it if I'm talking to the lost. I always ask the Lord to give me the right words to say. And he does. Because, you know, I don't want to leave nobody the wrong way. But again, I love the Lord and I'm glad to be with you. Today. God's good. He's been good to every one of us. Give God the praise. Shows you how uncertain life is. 
we could be here today and gone tomorrow. We could be in a nursing home. Or we could be uh, in a hospital somewhere on life support. Life is so uncertain. But you know what's so important? Knowing how you stand with God. That's the most important thing. It ain't the amount you got in the bank. It ain't how well people love you and how much you're respected in society. Knowing that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's the most important thing that I've got right now. I know. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I know how I stand with God. Nobody knows but me. We can look at each other and say, well, I think she's all right. I think she's all right. They're going to make, you know for yourself. You and God got your own thing going. And that's the way it is. I, I know how I stand with God. And I, I praise Him right now for everything He's ever done for me. Amen. The valleys and the mountains. Steph? Uh, Katie speaking about his ex-wife. That reminded me. James, I messaged James today reminding him of the 2 o'clock service. Uh -huh. And he messaged back and said he's sick. So I remember him in prayer. Okay. All right. Real out. Remember me and my home, my family, my office, my family, my brother, my brother, my brother. Got Brother Allen has asked for a prayer cloth for uh, anybody, and so we're going to do that when we go to prayer. If you preach with him, they can uh, come up and can. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we're going to anoint that when we go to the Lord's prayer. Anybody else right before we go to the Lord? Amen. George having a lot of trouble breathing in this cold weather. He just can't get out in Kevin, come over here with us. Take care of Christie's. For Kenny. Take care of stuff. Let's remember all these prayer requests. We go to the Lord. You guys want to stack them up? Everybody wants to come on around. Lord oh God, as we come to you, let us know how. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of the Lord of Christ again. Thank you, God, for everything that you do for us. We know what our eyes have been following me. Lord, without you, we're nothing in it. We can do anything. Lord, we ask you right now that you will down on these prayer requests.
got a summer too. Eddie's got a summer, but Pam's got a summer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Get to Brother Allen and get to one of them. All right. Who's going to sing first? You? Kevin, she's talking to you. Jen, bring the music. Come on. Come on. I got your heart down out of the wheel last week. So when you invite her to a dinner, you have to do a little Bible study beforehand so you'd be on guard. We asked her to read the Bible and she did. I think this whole church knows how blessed we are to have Kenny and Vicki coming to this church. Both of them. We are blessed. We really are. And and I have realized it for a long time. She has such a way with the children, too. And that that's a gift from God. It really is. Uh, she just knows. She knows how to get their attention. And watch them when they're up here singing on Sunday mornings. They're, they're attentive. They're obedient to their instructions. They, they read some kind of little play skit this morning. I couldn't catch it all because I couldn't hear it. Yet. But they've done an excellent job. Yes. Really and true. So we appreciate both of them. We appreciate everybody. Now don't, don't take that the wrong way, people. We appreciate everybody. But we like giving flowers when they can smell them. I just want to say one thing, guys. I hope everybody did what this song is titled. Yeah. Go ahead. I hope you did. You know what I'm talking about.
preach. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Jesus loves me, yes I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong, yes Jesus loves me, yes Jesus loves me, yes Jesus loves me.
no more madness, no more pain. When we all see Jesus face to face. Such a great rejoicing, holy, holy, worthy, worthy is the land. When we all see Jesus, yes, when we all. There's no more pain when we all see Jesus face to face when we all testified about this when he got visited. Do you want to really leave this world and have your loved ones wondering if you made it or not? Or would you like to leave this world with them having that calm assurance that even though it's painful to let you go, they know where you went? Think about that. Would you like to leave with the peace of mind of knowing my family knows I'm going to heaven? Because there's folks, and I've talked to a whole lot of different people in my lifetime. There's folks that will tell you, I don't know if my husband made it or not. I don't know because they never went to church. They never went to the altar. They never confessed anything. I don't know. I just hope that God had mercy. You want to leave them like that? Or do you want to leave them with the thought of knowing? Yes. I heard that yes. confession. They accepted yes. Christ Jesus Amen. and they're gone to a better place. Amen. As for me, I can only speak for me. I want my family to know I'm on my way to heaven. Yes. Amen. It's a heavenly place built for heavenly people. And I made my confession a long, long time ago and I'm holding on. And one day after a while, I'll see you on the other side. Amen. I'll leave before you do. Amen. Brother Kevin, come on and preach a little bit for us. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, you got
do that first. And then I'll do that. Yes. See what the Lord wants. Yes, Lord. Yes, in Jesus. Praise you, Lord. But I truly can live this song too, as well. I like singing songs that I've. I can live and I can relate to, you know. Because I've truly been such a blessed person. Just cannot thank him enough for my blessings. Every word of this song is so true for, for all of us. How blessed we just we truly are. Think about that when as as we're singing this song and you guys sing along with me, just think about how blessed you are. Just how truly blessed you are. As he walks among us, all that he does, all of his mercy, all of his love, is the pen of a writer, we write every day, even this world could never contain, oh I have been blessed. Warmth in the winter, flowers in spring, laughter in summer, the changing of leaves, food on my table, a good place to sleep, clothes on my back, shoes on my feet, oh I have been There's not enough time, so I'll just thank Him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. Oh, I have been blessed. Arms that can raise, a voice that can talk, hands that can touch, legs that can walk. Ears that can listen, eyes that can see. Oh, I've got to praise Him as long as I breathe, cause I have been blessed. Our fathers and mothers who nurtured and raised, brothers and sisters, memories made. Our pastor to lead us. The altar to pray, stripes that can heal, and blood that still saves. Oh, I have been blessed. I have been blessed. God's so good to me. Precious are His thoughts of you and me. No way I could count them. There's not enough time. So I'll just thank Him for being so kind. God has been good, so good. Oh, I have been blessed. We live in a country, the greatest on earth. Our flag stands for freedom and what it is worth. She stands in a harbor, Miss Liberty calls. All have gave some, but one gave it all for me to be blessed. He's my shoulder to lean on when I am down. The rock where he leads me when I'm overwhelmed. The place where he hides me under his wings. He's not just a song, he's the reason I sing. Oh, I have been blessed. I have been blessed. God's so good to me. Precious are his thoughts of you and me. No way I could them there's not enough time so I'll just thank him for being so kind God has been good 
so good Oh, I have been blessed My God has been good So good Oh, I have been Give your life to the Lord. 
That's where you're going. We preach it. We tell the truth about it. I'm not sure if I've ever heard hell preach as hot as I heard last Sunday. That was some of the hottest preaching of hell. And I don't know. That's what, that's what I've been trying to process all week. How anyone can hear a message like that and not hit their knees. I'm not talking about just the loss. Yeah, I don't know how a lost person can walk out of these doors and not have Jesus in their life after hearing that. I, I, yeah, I get that. I'm talking about Christians as well. It has got me checking up on myself this week. That message got me thinking this week. Making sure. Making sure that I'm ready. Making sure that there's nothing in my heart that will keep me out of heaven. I don't want to go to that place. I don't know about anybody else. I don't want to go to the place I heard about last Sunday. Or I've heard about my whole life. But last Sunday, heard about it as hot as I've ever heard it in my life. I don't want to go to this place, Brother Bobby. So I have been checking up on Kevin this week. I can't answer for you. I can't answer for nobody else. I can only answer for me. So I have been checking up on myself and hitting my knees quite a bit this week. Just saying, Lord... Make sure that there's nothing inside of me. And you know, I'm glad to get a blessing like I got over here a minute ago. Jennifer was singing the old faithful song, How Great Thou Art. Ain't it good to feel that blessing? Because what, what God shows me through those kind of blessings and what He showed me sitting over there just now. All week long, I've been seeing so many, and I'm not going to mention names. I don't, want, I, don't, I don't make a practice of mentioning Preachers' names and talking bad about it. I don't want to knock preachers. That's just me. I don't like doing that. But I've seen preachers and Christians on the internet or hearing and talking and putting other churches down, putting other preachers down, putting other pastors down, other denominations, things like that. You know what? If you listen to that stuff enough and if you watch and you see that stuff enough, it'll make you feel like you ain't on the right path. They'll make you feel that way sometimes. Because there's some beliefs out there, and I can I can say and think of three or four off the top of my head that pretty much believes they're the only ones going to heaven. That if you're not, if you're a Baptist, you're not going to heaven, or if you're a Pentecostal, you're not going to heaven. There's people out there that believe that. They believe they're the only ones that's right, don't they? And I'm telling you, they will. If you read into that stuff and you pay too much attention to that stuff, it'll make you feel like that you're not going to heaven. But then you get a blessing when you come to church on how great the how are. And the Lord tells you, son, you're all right. Don't worry about what other people are saying. You're on the right path. You're all right. You're okay. And that's what I'm thankful for. Thank God that he poured out a blessing like he did over there. The tears just coming out of my eyes thinking how what God did for us when he sent his only begotten son to this world to take on the form of a man, to take on the old cruel death of the cross, the most gruesome an embarrassing and humiliating death you could ever think of. The, th the death of the cross. To come to this earth and shed every drop of His blood. To take the nails in His hand. And I, I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I'm just minding the Lord. And I don't want to do what He wants me to do. Amen? But He took the, cro the crown of thorns. Big, long rose thorns that they made that crown out of. Pound pressed it down in His head where blood just poured down His face. And down His head, down His back took the beatings and the whipping of the old whipping post. When he walked up that hill, they beat him some more and they laid stripes on him. But he carried that cross all the way up that hill. I believe he carried that cross to where he couldn't carry it any farther. He couldn't go any farther. He fell, I don't know how many times probably, that he just couldn't go any farther. There was even one that had to bear his cross for him. Had to pick it up and help him carry it up that hill. They laid him down on that cross and they took big long spike nails. Big old long spike nails and pounded them with a hammer, nailed them into his hands and into his feet. They raised him up in shame. I believe it was the most cruel and embarrassing, humiliating death that you can ever imagine. Raised him up in shame before the whole world to see between two thieves, two criminals, two people that deserve to go to hell. But he, they raised him and deserved the death of the cross. Like they were, they were, they were dying on. But they raised him up between those two criminals, and he did it for me and for you. And when I thought of that second verse of that song, oh, on my cross, on the cross, my burdens, he gladly bore. 
And I almost said on my cross, but I want you to know tonight, if that would have slipped out, it would have been true too, because that was my cross. That should have been my cross that he died on. But he took my place. Ain't you glad that he came to this earth and he took our place? Hey, he took our place, church. And I want to read a, a couple of verses out of Isaiah chapter 55. It would be the Lord's will tonight. I thank the, today, I thank the Lord for what he's doing. I thank the Lord for what I feel in my heart, Brother Bobby. Thank God that I feel the presence and the moving and the stirring of the Holy Spirit here today. Hey, I can look around here and I can see faces that are missing, see people that are not here. I can get discouraged. Mom, I could. I can get discouraged and get downhearted. But I want you to know today, if I'm the only one left in this church and I'm preaching the four walls, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I love the Lord and I'm going to heaven whether nobody else wants to go or not. I'm on my way to heaven, Brother Rob. Thank the Lord. Isaiah 55, verse 6. I want you to hear this today. Like I said, after the message we heard last week, this has been a this has been a week of reflecting on where I'm going, and where I'm heading. And I'm thankful to tell you today to proclaim that I'm on my way to heaven. Now, thank God. Thank God. Verse six. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Pay attention to that word. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways. My ways, said the Lord. I sat here and read this, and I thought, he will abundantly pardon us. When I read that, I thought, that is so hard for our human minds to comprehend yeah. that. Yeah. that. That God could send His only precious Son to die and pardon us from the chains of bondage that we were in. When we're in sin, when you're in sin, you're in chains of bondage. Yeah. When, we, when I was in sin, I was in chains of bondage. Yeah. I was bound for prison. I was bound for a devil's hell. Compare it to a prison. But God pardoned me. Ain't you glad he pardoned you? Amen. Amen. And I thought that's, that's so hard for me to understand how anybody could love me enough to pardon me. But then I read the next verse. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. That's right. Neither are my ways, your ways, my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Thank the Lord for that. If I could use a thought today, pardoned by God's only Son. Amen. There's a line in the song that Martha sings. I wish she was here today because I wanted her to sing it. The mom and, and, and Barb and Debbie Hall used to sing the old song too. And there's a line in that song, I am pardoned by God's only Son. Amen. And that's when she sang that song last Sunday, that's been on my mind all week. Yeah. It's been on my mind all week. Even though I'm thinking and trying to process the message, Brother Robbie preached, the thought, I've been pardoned by God's yeah. only Son. Yeah. Ain't you glad He came and He pardoned you? Amen. Amen. I want, yeah. I'm telling you, you were on your way to prison. You were bound in shackles and chains on your way to a prison that is called hell. Yeah. And in the end, you're going to be burning in a lake of fire with the devil and his angels. In the end, that's where you were headed. But God, seeing that we needed a way out. And the search was made all over heaven, all beneath the, the, the earth, and all over the earth, all over the heavens, the search was made. No one was found worthy. There was no one found worthy. But Jesus, sitting there with God the Father, Jesus said, I'll go. Yeah. Got up off of his throne. He didn't have to do it, Roger. He got up off of his throne. And he said, Father, send me. I'll go. And I'll pay the price. Whatever that price is, whatever it takes, I'll pay that price for their sins. Whom the Son sets free. Hey, it's free indeed, ain't it? I'm so glad that I am indeed free because he has set me free. He came and he gave his life 
for me and for you. And He set me free. He set me free from the bondage of sin, from the bondage of what is awaiting, the punishment that is awaiting those that don't know the Lord. He set me free from that. Ain't you glad He set you free today? Hey, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Let's shout, them. Let's shout, them. Let's shout these walls down. Because thank God He has set us free. He has pardoned us by His only Son. Because He loved us so much that He gave His life for you. Hey, Robbie preached hell so hot last week. And you may look at that as a lot of negativity, a lot of negative stuff. But today, I want to tell you how you can keep from going to that place. Amen. Tell you how you how you can keep from going to this place. And I'm gonna tell you a story in the Bible, and it's all gonna end with something so simple. There were a couple of guys walking through the streets one day. There was a woman following behind them, just irritating them, annoy, annoying them, because she had a spirit of divination on it. Now, what is the spirit of divination? The Bible says that she brought her masters a lot of wealth, a lot of great things and a lot of wealth because of her sorceries, her fortune teller. She was a fortune teller. Witchcraft. It's a, part, it's a form of witchcraft in my book. But she brought her masters a lot of, a lot of wealth. Followed Paul and Silas and all of them down the streets and annoyed Paul so much that he turned around, had so much power on him, turned around and told that spirit to leave her in the name of Jesus. Now we can't do nothing in ourselves. This is a good example of that. This is a good example. Don't try to do nothing in yourself. We sang the song a while ago. We got the power. We don't stop there, though. In the name of Jesus. So Paul cast this evil, wicked spirit out of this woman. In the name of Jesus. Oh, they got mad at that, didn't they? They've lost their wealth now. They've lost all the wealth and all the good things that this woman was bringing to them by through her form of witchcraft. They, they, they're, they're mad now. Let's, let's get them. They, they, they arrested Paul and Silas. They, they took them and they cast them. They, kept, they brought them before the judges. And the judges commanded that they, be, they whipped them. They beat them with many stripes, the Bible says. They don't say how many. It just says many stripes. And they cast them in prison. And they told the jailer. They commanded the jailer to watch over them. Take care of them. Don't let them escape. In other words, watch them. Don't let them escape. Now the jailer, I believe he had a fear of the, his leaders. Because the Bible says he didn't just cast them into that prison. He threw them into the innermost parts of that prison. And he bound them with, by their feet with shackles and chains to where they could not escape. There was no possible way that they could escape. Lock the door. Lock them in. Lock the door in. And lock them inside of it. There's no way they can escape this. No way they can get out of this. Man, if we was in that position, what would we do? Oh, man, what would we want to do? Lord, gloom, I ain't need to spare on me. What are we going to do? That's what we'd be crying, wouldn't we? That ain't what Paul did. That ain't what Paul did. He said, let's have prayer meeting. They had prayer. They sang hymns, sang songs. They were just praising the Lord. No matter what they're going through, they're praising the Lord for their blessings. The Bible says there was an earthquake happened. The foundations of those prisons were shaken so much that the prison doors swung open. The chains and the shackles that they were tied down with broke loose. And not just them, it was every prisoner in the place. Everybody that was in that prison, the Bible says the doors swung open and they were loose from their chains and from their shackles. They're wondering, well, what's going on here? A lot of, I believe a lot of people that didn't know Jesus were wondering what's going on here. What's going on here? We're free now. We're free. God set them free. Set them free. And He pardoned them by His only Son. He pardoned them. Because they sang praises to God and they prayed to the Lord. And He pardoned them. The jailer, jailer was scared to death. The guy that was keeping, keeping, I believe he was in fear. They're going to kill me now. The Romans, they're going to kill me now. I know they're going to kill me now. They're going to take me out of here now. 
I've let, I've let them go. They sent me in authority to watch over these people and I've, somehow I've let them go because I fell asleep and while I was asleep, the doors were open and I, I looked at the doors open and I don't see nobody. And he took his sword. The Bible says he took his sword and he was getting ready to kill himself. He was going to take his own life because he knew he was dead anyway. He knew the Romans was going to kill him anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe that he was just about to strike himself and Paul said, wait a minute, don't, don't harm yourself. Do yourself no harm, he said, for we're all here. Look at us. We're all here. We're all here. And the jailer saw the goodness of God that day. Oh, yeah. He saw the goodness of God and how he can pardon him. From a life of prison, a life of shackles and chains, a life of bondage. He can pardon you from that. Yes. And he asked Paul, and he asked, he asked him, what must I do to be saved? Yes. If you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord, after, you, after hearing what you heard last Sunday, I don't know how you still don't know him, and you're still not giving your life to him, but that's what this jailer asked. What must I do right. to be saved? And you may be asking that same question. And I'm going to tell you the same thing Paul told this gentleman. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus. And you shall be saved. That's all it takes. It, is, it does not take, always take a ground shaking, tearing down the house, knocking down the walls, 14 people at a time shouting and preaching. It don't take that kind of service every time. For you to be saved. It don't take an earthquake happening all the time for you to be saved. Amen. Most of the time, it's that still small voice that'll speak to you, that'll tell you you need to be saved. Because you're taking a chance. You're taking a chance on your life. You're taking a chance on eternity. 70 years, the average lifespan of a man on this earth, in this life. 70 years is the average. It's so, so short, Brother Allen, compared to what eternity is. When you think about eternity forever, it's so short. And you're going to spend eternity one place or another. Yes, you're going to you spend are. forever. Yes, you are. In one place or the other. Yes, amen. I would sure rather be spending it in a place that's not going to harm me. Amen. I'd sure rather be spending it in a place that's going to have streets of gold. Yeah. I'd sure rather be spending in a place where a mansion's prepared and promised. I'd sure rather be be spending it in a place where my loved ones are, That's right, amen. where my husband may be, or my mommy may be, or my daddy, or my wife, or my children may be. I'd sure rather be spending in a place like that amen. than a place that I heard about last Sunday night. Amen. I don't want to be. I don't want to go to that place. I don't know about anybody else, but I don't want to go to that place. I can only, like I say, I can only answer for myself. But I'm not planning on going to that place. What did Jesus do for you? We, I, we sang the song about the old rugged cross this morning, I believe it was. And that, that last verse of that song, I brought this book up here because I want to make sure I get the words right. I want to read the last verse to this song because I feel like as Christians, as a church, this is kind of like a, a pledge. It's kind of like a pledge that we make. To the old rugged cross, I will ever be true. Don't that sound like a pledge to you? And I was thinking about that when we were singing that in the choir this morning. That's my pledge to you, Lord. To the old rugged cross, I will ever be true. It's shame and it's reproach I'll gladly bear. And then we have a promise in the second part of that verse. Then he's going to call me someday to my home far away. Where his glory forever I'll share. Some of the most beautiful, beautiful words you'll ever hear written in any song in your life. He's going to call us Sunday, church, to our home far away, where His glory forever we're going to share. That's right. Praise the Lord. We'll sing, worthy, worthy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God all the days of our life and the rest of eternity. I can't wait to get to that place. So I don't know about you, but I cannot, I'm not in no hurry for this life to end. I ain't saying that, but sometimes this world gets so wicked, so evil. I'm just like, why do I want to be here anymore? Let's just 
<laughs> let's just go on to our permanent home and, and get this over with. Let's go be with everybody. Go to our permanent home. We got a heaven to gain, Sister Bell. We got a hell to shun. You better shun this place. You better take heed to what Robbie preached to you all last Sunday night. You better take heed to it. Take heed to it. It's not a place you want to go to. Because here's another thing about that place that I don't think Robbie mentioned this last week. He might have, but another thing about that place that's going to make it even worse. Not only the physical pain that you're going through, the emotional and mental anguish that you're going to go through of being able to remember every service that you sat through and that you walked out them doors and you rejected the call of God. Every service you're going to remember that. You're going to be able to look up into heaven and you're going to be able to see exactly what Kevin is telling you about on December 4th, 2022. You're going to remember that thinking, man, that's the place I missed out on. Yeah. Yeah. Look yeah. at them up there. They're so happy. So happy and so full of joy. I could have been there. Why didn't I listen? Why didn't I go? Just give up whatever is holding me back and go to that altar that day. Why didn't I just give up whatever is holding me and binding me down and keeping me out of the family of God and just go to that altar? Amen. Yes. Let go of whatever, the embarrassment or whatever. Just humble myself down. And give my life to it. We have to humble ourselves. My first study today, or last night, was on submission. Submitting ourselves to the Lord. Humbling ourselves to the Lord. Making a commitment to the Lord. Because that's what we have to do. Yes, we do. It's what we have to do to give our life to the Lord to be a Christian. We've got to commit our lives yes. to Him. To live it for Him. That was my first message. But God changed that this morning. When I heard 305 saying about it in the old hymn, God changed that this morning. I'm thankful He did because I feel it. I feel it today. I feel like. I feel like that. I feel like I'm on my way to heaven, brother. But I can't put it in other way. I feel like I'm on my way to heaven, brother Mark. Ain't you glad you're on your way to heaven? We're going to a place where brother Mark's going to get a new voice. We're going to be able to hear you praising the Lord, singing, Holy, holy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God. We're going to a place where Brother Allen's going to get new eyes. He's going to be able to see what he's been preaching about for however many years. He's going to be able to see it with a natural eye, with a spirit, with, with, with his natural body, with his glorified body. Amen. Going to a place where cancer can't go. Amen. Going to a place where COVID can't go. We're going to a place where no sickness can go. Nothing can take us out. Because we're going to a place where there's no more death. There's no more sickness. There's no more parting over in this place we're going to. Ain't you glad you're going? Amen. I'm so glad I'm going. Brother Bobby, come on. I love you. Amen. to you some of my favorite scriptures that I didn't make it to tonight. Brother Andy will know these verses well. Who has believed our report? Have you believed the report today? Amen. What Jesus what God sent you? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Think about that verse, that line. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? It means the power of the Lord. Who is, has the power of the Lord been revealed to? He's been revealed to a lot of us, ain't he? Amen. He was revealed to us this morning at Sunday school when we saw Sister Kathy walk through the indoors. That's the power of God, amen? amen? Thank the Lord. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Now listen, lost person, I'm telling you what Jesus did for you today. As a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. 
He was despised, we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and he's carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Listen to me. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Thank God he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Another translation says he was crushed for our iniquities. It's the same thing. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Aren't you glad he took your place today? You didn't have to go to that cross because of what he did. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Here's a good one. With his stripes we are healed. Amen. Amen. And all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Right. If we went to that trial that day. There's no way we could stand there without opening our mouth and saying something. But this man knew what he was doing. Jesus knew what he was what he was up against. He knew he was there to give his life for us. He knew this was his purpose. This was his end. He opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is done, so he opened not his mouth. Amen. As they sing this song, let's all stand. Somebody want to come? Break those chains of bondage today. Hey, church, let me ask the church here today. Pray. Pray today. If you don't mind, please pray. This could be the day that all things will change. This could be the day a change is made in Lundell Church. Won't you come and give your life to today? Humble yourself down and say, Lord, I want to live for you. Just humble yourself down and say, Lord, come into my heart and save me. And forgive me of my sins. And I'm telling you, He is faithful and just to forgive you those sins. And no matter what you've done, no matter how bad you think you've been, how mean you think you've been, He's still faithful to forgive you. If our Jesus can take the place of an old robber, an old murderer that was in prison, his name was Barabbas, if he can take his place and die for him, he can save you today. Amen. Somebody come give you life. Come and get the best gift you could ever get today. Anyone, won't you come? He's here today. He's wanting to save you today. He's wanting to make a change in your life. here today and they just want to love you. They just want to love you. That's all we do. We just love people. We want to love you to Jesus. Today. We love you enough to tell you the truth. We love you enough to tell you. You've got to make a change in your life. You must be born again to enter heaven. And Paul said it's so simple. Just believe on the name of the Lord Jesus. You shall be saved. The Bible says him and his whole household were saved that day. His whole house was saved that day. He can make that same change in you today. He can save you today too. We're still serving a Savior that is in a saving business. We're still serving. He's still saving today.
piece of shell, right? A piece of shell or the odd one. Did you enjoy the message? Amen. We're always thankful for everyone to come out, especially you, I'd say. I just pray someday somebody will say the right words. Maybe it might make you make that decision. Don't wait on That's Kevin for all that his message. Don't wait on an earthquake to move you. You know your law. You know you need to be saved. That's all it takes. Come on down. Tuesday night, Ben Lord's will, Brother Kenny will be preaching. Right, Kenny? All right, Brother Kenny will be doing the preaching uh, this coming Sunday. I'll be doing the preaching, but Kevin announced this morning <clears throat> we're going to have a little old uh, thing out there in the kitchens for all of our young classes out there. That's in the morning. Then the following, huh? That's in the morning. Yeah, you announced it this morning. Yeah. So then the following Sunday, we're going to exchange gifts. Well, that's Sunday morning. You're preaching Sunday night. That's what I said next Sunday morning. Y'all didn't hear me say morning? Next Sunday morning, I stand corrected, everybody. I'm glad I'm among perfect people right here. <laughs> I'm learning from you guys. Yes? I mean, yeah. You got something perfect to say? I'm only carrying on. And today, no time change. Uh, six o'clock is when it's going to start. Let's start to see. The, uh, the meat and the uh, refreshments, the soft drinks, and the uh, coffee and the water. So bring side dishes to go with the turkey in the hand. Amen. And we do want to remind everyone that today is the deadline. I'll take a name for the basket because we have to have time to get everything gathered up, made up, and give out. So. If you have somebody that's really and truly in need of a food basket for Christmas, you got today, I guess from midnight tonight, to call Sister Jamie or Sharon or anybody, the lady today, Terry to take and get that name in there. And if you don't have, may God richly bless you. I'm telling you folks, uh, just just do it before midnight because it's very important that we get it done, okay? All right, and then they'll, just, uh, they'll let you know later what we're in need of. I know we've got four or five turkeys already obligated, right? Did you say four? Um, yeah, we've got, uh, I got donations to give Jamie this morning to buy three turkeys, and then Thank somebody God. else donated us another one, so we've got four. And then I don't know, I'm going to donate. Well, that'll be five turkeys, but we're going to wait until Jamie, she'll tell us how many we've got all together, probably about Tuesday. She'll let everybody know how many more turkeys she needs. Okay, Ray. You can count me in. Yes, what about the weight? What about what? The hell boy's daddy. We haven't been notified yet. Uh, to my understanding, his body hasn't even made it back to West Virginia yet. And then it will go to Cranston McNeely. They'll meet with her. They'll get the arrangements took care of. They're supposed to let me know as soon as they find out anything. I'm just wondering about it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if it does happen on Tuesday, we'll we'll have a wake here on Tuesday night. But. If the wake is like Wednesday night, we'll still have prayer meeting Tuesday night. As of right now, plan on having prayer meeting Tuesday. If something changes, it will be on the church website. And if you don't see that, you just come up and pay your respects at the wake. So if we uh, have church Tuesday night, can you do that dedication? Yeah, we surely will. Okay. If we have church uh, on Tuesday night, we're going to do a baby dedication because uh, Stephanie's future daughter and all right. Yeah. Not very dear, right? Yeah. They are moving, relocating, and so they are going to be leaving Friday, I think it is. So we'll do that on a Tuesday night and dedicate that baby to the work of the Lord. All right? Okay, all hearts and minds clear. We shall stay. Okay. Thank you, Lord.